Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. As I said in the previous video, in this video I do not want to send people to the moon, land on the moon and do the same thing over again that we just did. We will take a break from that even though we do need to do the crewed lunar landing contract. But we haven't picked that up yet so we do have time for that and it doesn't have an expiration date. So right now what we have is there is a earth to jupiter window but it's in six days which is really tight but if we make our rocket really really small we could manage it but it needs a lot of antenna power and it needs a lot of power too because we're going out to jupiter and we don't have rtgs so that's a bit of a problem uh we will have to have fairly large solar panels to make this work out but if we CubeSat it extensively, maybe we can manage it. We'll have to see, but I'm tempted to try and go for that. The Mars window is too far off. The next Venus window is even worse. I'll put that in. Uh, 530 days. And of course, any further flung destination will be harder. There's possibly like Vesta. That's in 73 days. That's more manageable. But they don't, I don't think they give us Vesta contracts. Or series contracts. Let's take a look. That's a little bit sad though, isn't it? Uh, flyby contracts. Yeah, there's no Vesta or series or anything like that. So, and you know, it's not like we've done a lot of that in real life, but yeah, that's a little bit sad. Uh, tourism was another option, but that would involve going to the moon again. Uh, in fact, this one asked them to land on the moon. They're not paying me nearly enough for that. Um, the, uh, this contract also has a land on the moon. That's, I guess, why it's a three star. Uh, this is a two star. It also still has a land on the moon. They're really... Ne next, if I do the Jupiter flyby, they're going to be wanting to land on Jupiter or something. Uh, I don't know if it'll allow that. It'll be interesting. I, I don't know how well the contracts are configured to avoid such things. But yeah, there's a new orbital station around the moon, but that's one of the liquid fuel ones. There's an uh, orbital station around Earth that isn't one of the weird ones, but it doesn't pay much either. Um, and then as far as positioning, positioning satellites, the Earth one isn't worthwhile. Uh, there is a Deimos one, but we'll wait for the Mars window for that. Um, yeah, there are for other locations as well. Uh, another risk is that if we send a probe out to Jupiter and do the Jupiter flyby, they're going to want me to send satellites to Jupiter and then suddenly we won't even get the Mars ones anymore. So that's troublesome. In fact, maybe to forestall that, we should pick up some Mars satellite ones first before they all go away just in case. So I'll pick up this. I mean, it's got a generous duration. So a Mars sat, uh, might as well get a Phobos sat as well. Even though it's, well, it doesn't matter whether it's backwards or forwards, does it? Colnia Orbit? Really? Uh, first of all, I swear I uh, changed the name, but it didn't pick up to Molnia, of course. But it's not really going to be a Molnia Orbit around uh, Deimos, not at those heights. Heck, it'll probably impact uh, onto the surface with that periapsis, so let's just avoid that. We've got one for Mars, Phobos, and Deimos. So that'll be fine. We've already got satellites around Venus. You've been doing a lot of that. Still need to do the surface science. That's the issue. Uh, we already have that contract. Okay, so let me see what I can cook up for Jupiter. Is it possible? I mean, the Jupiter window is fairly broad. There's a lot of room, right? Jupiter can suck you in without too much trouble. We can do a mid-course correction and everything. Delta V-wise, it takes a lot of Delta V. But we are absolutely going to go with a CubeSat here. We'll go for three unit CubeSat. Okay, that's got a controller in there. And then we, we're gonna need to spam batteries on it. No, not batteries, antennae. We obviously will have a tank at the bottom. Okay, so as far as our antennae are concerned, the best we've got are these helix antennae. Uh, we've got bigger always open relays and then this relay, but this one has the best L2 range. And that's still like, we need a lot. We need 
a lot, a lot in order to make it work. So we're going to seriously porcupine this. I don't even know if it'll be enough. But this is sort of uh, just flinging it out. I've got to have 24 of them. I can't even zoom in more. I swear there are satellites like this that have like antennae poking out all over the place. But it doesn't strike me as ideal or anything. Oh no, I think I buried them in too much. I'm gonna have to pull them out, action group them, and then put them in neatly. Okay, so that will extend them. I can get them neat here. We've got some solar panels up there, but that's not gotta be enough, I think. Not for Jupiter. We've got the basic science in, and I'll just load the rest of the room up with batteries. Oh, but these little thrusters can only do hydrazine. I don't know if this is such a good idea, but we're going to have a separate tank for the main engine and still use MH and Mon 3 for it. So our RCS will use a different propellant. Fortunately, the CubeSat doesn't need that much power, so that's the positive thing. Oh, but the solar panels are huge. And it's got to be quite a flight, too. So, solar panel degradation, let's say 500 days. We're at Jupiter. 5 watts each. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, those ones at the top aren't good enough. We probably don't even need to deploy them. Uh, let's see, how much delta V does this give us? 2,555. And there's no upgrade or anything for this. We don't have to get into orbit around Jupiter. We just need to fly by. A lot of solar panelry. Gotta get one of those little CubeSat reaction wheels in here. Instead of a battery. Um, oh, we don't have those yet. Those are more advanced technology, I think. Well, maybe they're under control. No, we do. Okay. Mm, reaction wheel. Okay. That'll save us from rotation. That's all. I mean, a roll. I didn't want to add roll thrusters. Well, that's awkward, but if we're gonna do this quickly, this is already three days here. Make super ah, this was not pressure fed. Well, not too bad anyway. Maybe we can go with a two ton rocket, a rocket that can get two tons to low Earth orbit. That's 7,000 meters per second. It should be enough to get to Jupiter. But maybe we should guarantee it a little bit more. 2.4 tons. And we'll add extra thrusters on here. That didn't add too much, just the little engine. It's a 12 kilonewton engine and then this tank, so... Apparently not too complicated. You know... Um... Does the higher tick level take more time? No, I guess not. Oh, no, it did. Wait, wait. Three days, 18 hours. And then if we increase the tech level on this, it eventually corrects to three days, 22 hours. I'll take it, though. Not too bad. Doesn't look too bad as far as the build time is concerned. Maybe we can get one of our pre-built rockets. I mean, this looks like the right thing, doesn't it? Maybe it's a little bit... No, it's not overdone, it doesn't look like. Maybe a little bit underdone. 11 days. I mean, you know, 6 days... Like I said, there's sort of a fudge room around the Jupiter window, and also that's not a transfer window planner window. Probably it's different from that anyway. I need to make a custom line of SRBs. 
for this instead of like having a caster one or using the procedural SRBs. Procedural SRBs are always dodgy. But maybe it's time. Oh my god, look what happened. I didn't even click it. Okay, its nodes are in the wrong place. I didn't actually put it there. <laughs> um, uh, hold on. Yeah, look! It spontaneously attaches. I told you, these procedural SRBs just don't. <laughs> just don't. I don't know what's wrong with them. See, it's spontaneous, it spontaneously left one. It's... Oh, God. No, they're multiplying. Um, that's so weird. I haven't ever seen that before. But... Welcome to the world of procedural SRBs, I guess. I, okay. I, I swear, I was not holding alt or anything uh, to duplicate them or anything like that. Nothing. It was just spontaneously doing that. So no procedural SRBs. Caster 1. I'm not a big Caster 1 fan. Obviously, if we want to get better boosters, we'll have to do a deal with one of the major manufacturers until I get custom SRBs in here. I don't know why the procedural SRBs are... Okay, the procedural nose cones are also a little bit iffy. They don't like to go on to things. But the procedural SRBs are really special. Well, for 23 seconds, we're going to have a lot of extra boost. That might do the trick. Maybe we can have airlit ones as well. We're getting... They, they, they take a long time to make, don't they? It's four extra days to get these. Let me just set that aside. Oh, it's just... Uh, just for the decouplers, it's two days. It's not the fault of the boosters per se. Okay, so we'll have four of these and an air light, two of them. 19 days. Well, we'll try it out. I don't know. I mean, that that increases the build time of this by eight days just to add those little boosters. But the numbers look better like that. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll call this Jupiter 1. <laughs> It's not like the other na rocket named like that would be any good anyway. Okay, so build. All right, we're not going to make a backup. We're just going to try this. We'll get it on its way. Then we'll probably start building the next moon landing mission while it's on its way. Lots of major questions here, especially with the antennae. A mere five hour rollout time. Okay, there's no SAS unit on board. Right, I guess the CubeSat things don't do SAS. But we have Smart ASS, it's fine, I think. Right? Well, we're here now. Okay, so surface... Like that. And we actually want to ignite the boosters after launch clamps release. And ignition. Okay, and launch. Two of the boosters. Okay, booster set and ignition. Okay, booster set. Well, the boosters did their thing. Okay, well, fairings apparently, and then staging. That is all good. Okay, I'm getting the antennae out. All oh, those little guys poking out there. And I don't think there's enough fuel left in this to justify bringing it to orbit and trying to get it to help out or anything. Okay, uh, we'll leave it deorbiting. Hopefully, it will actually deorbit. Okay, separation. And ignition. Right, so can we get to Jupiter with uh, 7,500 meters per second? That is the question. First question of many. Let's just have MechJab do an automatic plot to see what happens. 
um, ASAP. You know, ASAP seems to be the lowest as well, which tracks. So that's not not a bad time. And it's 6,653, it says. And that periapsis, get it? It's not showing me the periapsis. Ah, well, that's certainly low enough. In fact, probably too low. But, you know, that's not going to happen anyway. Doesn't matter what inclination we're at. If we had a happenstance flyby of a moon, that would be nice, but it's not necessary nor likely. So anyway, on we go. We'll have to double check on our communication situation. That should be Australia. And it looks like we have uh, overhead connection to the geostationary satellite. That is not really over the Indian Ocean, but close enough maybe. Oh, I don't know why it clicked. Uh, it's not showing it anymore. We surely should be connecting through. Oh, I guess we're picking up the ground station, so it doesn't. But uh, yeah, let's keep that up. Oh, oh, I passed the burn time. Oh, no. And this was such a good opportunity, too, with the satellite overhead. It'll still be overhead, though, I think. So we'll wait one. In fact, in this case, it might be a horizon problem. If we wait one more uh, orbit, it might be better off in its positioning. I don't know if things are a little bit off right now. Uh, yeah, uh, if it moves over here, it'll cover us better. So we'll use that excuse. And of course, we've got uh, storable fuels, so we don't have to worry about that. As far as waiting one orbit and how it affects our approach to Jupiter, uh, well, it pulls us away a little bit. But again, that's probably something that minor corrections would need to deal with anyway. Now each panel was supplying 5 watts, that's uh, 20 watts altogether around Jupiter, and the probe core only takes 5 watts, so that's our math. Okay, and ignition. This has got to be a long burn. We'll do it most with this stage, but we still need to use the other stage, and that's going to take a while too. Of course, the journey is going to take a while too, about three years, or less than three years, but pretty close. Uh, two years and nine months or so. Okay, coming to the end of this burn. Okay, separation and ignition. Hopefully our RCS is properly working. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Really, when you look at the probe, it's all solar panel. <laughs> it's like very much solar panel. What can we do? Unfortunately, I didn't put any downward facing RCS thrusters, so we're going to have to use our main engine for everything. Just cut it there and see what's going on. Let me try and plot something close and see if we can make a quick fix or whether we need to do a mid-course adjustment. This doesn't seem like mid-course adjustment territory. It's not inclination. It's partly inclination though. Let me see. That was about 150, let's say. What about if it's a mid-course adjustment? Oh yeah, since it's prograde and retrograde, it seems to cost more as a mid-course adjustment. Maybe if we do it radial? No, that's even worse, probably as expected. Okay, so we do want to do it right now, even though it costs 150. I want to see how close we need to get. Wait, did we not take the contract? Ah, uh, hold on a sec. I forgot to take the contract. No, please let it not be launch a new thing. Oh gosh. Well, how did I not take? The gosh darn it! But I think it's a. Uh, hmm. Well, let's do this first. 
Gosh, and this was looking so good too. Okay, ignition. We're getting way too much hydrazine for just orientation, really. We should have put some little hydrazine thrusters at the bottom. Okay, well, we might as well orient to the sun for now. We are surely getting close to Jupiter. Probably not close enough like that. We'll add a mid-course adjustment. That's not going to take too much effort. Oh, that's actually crashing into Jupiter. Okay, well, that should be enough right there. And I'll add that alarm. Okay, maybe there's still enough time to build another one of these and launch it. But anyway, let's go to Space Center. They're not expensive. Okay, the question is... What does it say? Launch a new vessel. I'm afraid it would say that. 20,000 and transmit science. We don't really know if we can transmit the science though. And the failure cost is high. So you know what, maybe it's good that we didn't pick it up just yet. We'll try it out with this probe first. Verify that we can actually communicate, because we don't know if we have the communication range, right? We've got all those antennae. It might, it depends on exactly how it calculates the combinable antennae. But then once we figure out that we can actually do it, then we'll pick up the contract. Deimos and Phobos really need to happen too. We've got the satellite contracts for those, but again, the window is uh, quite far off. Let me uh, get started on building, uh, well, we'll up, uh, fix up this Lynx, build the new lander, and I'll get that stuff queued. Okay, we've got the new moon lander that's being built and also a refit of the Lynx S3-3. Uh, that actually will take about 300 days after the moon lander, but it's in the second build slot, so it's chugging along as we speak. And uh, we could add some more build points, but I'm not necessarily in a hurry. Let's get the node on the Jupiter 1 done first, and then we'll see. So I might as well just uh, warp to complete on the moon lander. We'll skip the Vesta opportunity for now, since we don't get anything from it. Okay, so the moon lander is now built, and we're working on the return capsule, whatever you want to call it, the Lynx. And we have to turn to Jupiter 1 to see if we can do its mid-course adjustment. Not a guarantee. Do we have comms? We barely have comms. 13%. So I don't think it's got to be enough here. So we'll do the maneuver, but yeah, if it's only 13%, I don't see how we're going to be able to get all the way out to Jupiter. We're only halfway. We can reach Vesta. <laughs> we can get to Vesta or Ceres with this, which might be a good thing to note. We've got a Ceres opportunity in 29 days. We can send one over to it. And that might work out, though the Earth isn't as far away from Ceres' orbit as it could be. So it's not the worst case scenario. But yeah, apparently 24 of these little antennae are not enough, which means we should turn to the tech tree and see where we can get better antennae. But first, let's try and do this node. We'll just go ahead and do it and see what comes of this. It'll still fly by Jupiter. Let's double check that it's getting close enough. Yeah, that, that's under the 20 kilometers. We'll pay attention to this. And ignition. Okay, that looks even closer than that. Uh, 12,000 kilometers. So, yep, it'll get close to Jupiter, it's just that we won't be able to communicate with it, I don't think. But, we'll get an SOI change alarm for it. But, it won't be arriving until after we attempt the crewed mission anyway. But, I don't expect too much from it. 
let's take a look at the tech tree and see where we can get some better antennae because obviously if uh, 24 of these the longest range antennae that we've got can't do the trick i think we need something better well oddly enough this unmanned tech with a little com dish on the little icon doesn't actually have any any communication dishes and it's just probe cores those could be helpful and all but no, those are there's a boeing satellite bus there and other satellite buses but here we have a parabolic antenna under this one but it's still gonna cost 300 and that doesn't quite get us enough range with the l2 with the l3 it would get us enough range to jupiter i think with the l2 it doesn't odd that the antenna rating is 2.3 t i mean can't we get a terameter somewhere in there but anyway uh, maybe two of them will work, but I don't think so. I, not with uh, how the combination thing seems to work. So we need better antennae, and maybe maybe the option would be if I put in Raider Nick's pack, um, US Pro's pack, and get Voyager from somebody. Because I don't think I have that if we just have it like this. I could do a deal with one of these... Uh, corporations if if we have the right parts but i haven't added any of the additional parts packs right aside from my, uh, my own parts i have only got the stock parts here so that's a thought i don't know maybe you guys can comment on whether i should add some part pack that uh fills these things up so that we can do a deal with corporations and see if that has any benefit or whether we should just uh, wait and gather some more science. Eventually, if we upgrade the the VAB, not the VAB, the research and development building, uh, we can get this science with 550. We have to upgrade the building first, though, and then we can get this parabolic antenna, which will allow for outer planet missions. I mean, it makes sense that we have to get high technology for outer planet missions, so not entirely against that. How much will the upgrade cost, though? Four million. So we're nowhere near that right now. But that, that got, sort of explains why not a lot of people have sent outer planet missions, right? So, yeah, it's sort of a balancing thing. Maybe we should plug away at it and see what we can do. Uh, make sure that it is possible for people to fulfill these contracts, right? I mean, I sort of have to test that. But... Yeah, is there enough money in the contract system to allow for the upgrade of all the buildings so that we can do all the things? Now, I think maybe I should try that out. So anyway, I think I'll wrap it up here. Next time we are going to try the lunar landing again, this time sending crew out. We There is a possibility of picking up crew around the moon, mind you. There is a lot of rescue and recovery contracts around the moon and around Earth too. But I think we will at least send one person from the surface maybe we'll do a rescue contract maybe we won't i don't have one of the depots under construction so that's got to limit our capabilities but we do still have the depot that's already in orbit you'll have to do some maneuvers to rendezvous though anyway with those being the thoughts and sort of a failed jupiter probe in this video i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time